about the bass. What's crazy about bass is bass is a huge market, right? We have over 110 different dedicated bass blanks. 110. That's a lot. And that's not counting the popping series that you can use. That's yeah. not counting a lot of different blanks that cross over into bass. Yeah. But we have 110 dedicated bass rods. Woo! I know. Um, so we're only doing a small section of those today. Yes. We're kind of planning on doing multiple bass episodes. Most definitely. But since early season is opening up, we wanted to do a little bit of a niche right here. First episode, early season bass. Yes, a little niche. Um, we're going to have Mike Thorson come in later. He is our bass professional. He used to fish professionally bass. And he's our blank designer, as everybody knows. Mm -hmm. So we'll have him in a little bit later to talk about some baits that are primarily used for this time of the season. Yeah. But first of all, we're going to talk about our giveaway. We we're love not giveaways. Announcing it quite yet, but we did want to let you know that you are in the right place. We are going to be announcing it after we go over our blanks, but we are going to be giving away the. MB843. Yes. If you're going to have one bass rod, this is the bass rod to have. We yeah. have this particular one built. It is a Team Rain Shadow. It has the uh, old school cork handle, 9 inch cork handle. It has the Alps uh, TX Real Seat double locking nuts. It is done in our Team Rain Shadow black and red. It has double footers all the way out on this particular one. And we'll be giving away this one or a blank of your choice. Dun, 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 dun. And this one was stolen from Bill Batson's collection. <laughs> I took it out of there and I thought he wouldn't notice and I don't think he has yet. Oh, I um, noticed. <laughs> he has over 700 rods in there. He won't miss one. This one <laughs> is from his personal collection and it is wonderful this is kind of the best all-around bass blank yeah if you're gonna have, have one rod the mb843 it's a seven it's a seven foot one piece eight to seventeen pound test rod it, you can do a little bit of everything with it yeah. um did we get clarification that everybody can hear us i got a thumbs up okay we're good perfect, perfect. so wonderful beautiful amazing so we're going to be doing that giveaway a little bit later in the episode, but Perfect. I think that we're good to kick off. Excellent. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about a rod and a technique a lot of people don't know, or I'm sure they know about. Um, I've never personally done it. Michael will talk about it a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But this blank is a nine foot two piece spinning rod. It's called the REVS 90L. It's a float and fly blank, right? Mm -hmm. This is for main lake points, secondary points where the fish move up to before they go up into the spawn. Yeah. Right? So they're throwing float and fly. And Mike will explain float and fly a little bit later. Yeah. But I'll show you the blank, right? So I, I have it. I was talking to one of our guys and uh -huh. he said he referred to this one as the runt. Because usually um, our bass blanks are going to have a little bit more power here in the end. Yes. So this is our runt, but it's a little bit of an unusual method Unless you're doing early season, yeah? Yes, yes. So and this is a classic build. This has the longer rear grip. This one has the slim down EVA cork composite with the nub built as a spinning rod. And like I said, it's a two-piece. Oh, I wasn't yeah. expecting that. <laughs> I know, nine foot two-piece. So this is the float and fly. They built it in, They built it into a spinning. And you can see the action. I'll show you the action. Yeah. We're going to put on our glasses. Oh, I got my glasses on my head. There you go. We're gonna show the action. You can grab the tip of this particular one. I'm scared to put the And you'll be able to see this is more of a mod fast action. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and back up a little bit for me, Eden. There we go. And it's more of a mod fast action. It's, it's As you can see, it bends farther back mm -hmm. into the feral areas. And if I push forward, hold it there, you can see. So that's probably why they call it the rod because most bass rods are faster, yeah. shorter, yeah. stronger. Uh -huh. But we'll get into the technique, but this is a very popular technique. It's yeah. called the float and fly. Float and fly. Yeah, and this particular blank, we developed this one about four years ago. So it hasn't been in the lineup very long. Oh, it's a newbie. It's a newbie for the series, and it's in a two-piece. So that's the REVS 90L. Beautiful. Two-piece, two satin piece. black. Beautiful. I like the build. I was going to say, I love this cork. Yeah, so that's the cork composite with uh, the EVA, and it's, it's the slim version, so yeah. it's nice in the hand. And it's so light. Yes. Like, that's insane to me. Yeah. 
So, like I said, Mike, I'll have Mike Thorson come in a little bit later and explain to you the float and fly. He, I think he has a kit, the original float and fly guy gave him it, something like that. Ooh, so, he's got always, always yeah. does a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, Mike always has a lot of cool stuff. He's been around a long time. Yeah. His, his garage is like, he's got like 500 tackle boxes full of everything. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So anyways, so that's our first one. It's yeah. the float and fly. Um, like I said, it's for main lake points, secondary points. Before the fish move up into the spawn, early spring presentation. So we're getting to that time. Yeah. So if you want to float and fly, you're looking at this model. Beautiful, wonderful, amazing. Okay, the next one that I think we're going into um, is our jerk bait rods. Yes. So yeah. So for a jerk bait rod, this one is particularly a six eight. If you want to grab it off the rack, I think it's the second one in. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah. I like this build too. I like this. Yeah, it's got the classic cork split grip. Mm -hmm. It's not real classic. The classic is a straight grip like I showed yeah. I'll show, I showed you I earlier. Like the split grip look. Yeah, it's kind of new. It's kind of cool. It looks modern. It's been around for a while. It's been around for 10, 12 years. Yeah. And you got the nice whining checks in between. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the rear grips aren't very long. Mm -mm. You know, I'm used to, because I'm a saltwater guy and casting and stuff, I'm used to longer grips, but these grips seem so short. But anyway. Got the double locking trick, real seat. Huh. You know, this particular one has three strippers and the rest of the table puts on the tip. And this these, this one is built for jerk baits. Mm -hmm. uh, built as a casting rod, but you throw jerk baits, husky jerks, corner minnows. You know, all of the early spring stuff. Yeah. Right. So I, I want to show you a little this, bit faster action. Yeah. So this one is actually an extra fast. Yeah. So I'm going to oh. show you the extra fast action of this one. Let's put on the glasses. Do we have a safe word today? Do we have a safe word today? Oh, guys, I don't know. What should the bass. safe word be? Bass? bass. Well, that's all <laughs> the bass. It's all about the bass. It's all about the bass. I'm not going to be pulling really hard today because I don't need to, but I want to show you the action. <laughs> this is what we call an extra fast. So tell me about the power in this blank while you're doing this. Oh, it's got plenty of power, but look, see all the power is here. Yeah. Right? You see how, when I say extra fast, just hold it right there. You can see how fast this rod is, where it yeah. shuts off, right? And it's got plenty, boom, boom. Because when bass guys, like, boom, and they jump. When they, oh, do that again. Like, boom, <laughs> they jump when they set the hook, right? <laughs> is that how you jerk it? So guys, the new, the new way, go, <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm just, I get a joke. A lot of bass guys jump when they set the hook. But anyways, so the perfect. So this is the REDC yeah. 6.8 MXF. Mm-hmm. It's got the small diameters. Yeah. It's not like a mag bass taper, you know. Got plenty of power, plenty of power, and like I said, it's got that fast action. Yeah. Right? It's got that fast action. I want to see the blank for that one. Okay. Actually, it's on the board. Oh, it's on the board. Yeah. So they put it on the board for me, so you can see it. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this so you can see see a little bit better. Tip. Right. Just so you can see that tip. Yeah. We got a lot of weight on that one, you know, so you can see um, the actions. Right? So yeah. if I'm running straight across. Ooh, whoa. Ooh. I came out of my fixture. Hold this. Hold this. Hold this. Hold that? Yeah. Hold that. Oh, he's, he's strong enough. He's got it. I got this. All right. <laughs> you got to be careful with these fixtures. Yeah. He's a ramrod. I, I am a ramrod. And I, I am also a ramrod because I get it from him. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see that this is a 6.8 yeah. MXF. You know, so we've got a lot of weight on here. Yeah. Um, this is our flex board. I'm sure we've explained that before, yeah. but anyways, um, jerk bait rod, husky jerks, pointer minnows, things like that. Yeah, great early spring presentation. Yep. And for the spinning model, it's the, we have a spinning model, a little bit longer. Third one in? Yep, third one in. We try to keep it organized here. And we'll try you can to see, anyway. Yeah, and this is the old school 17 um, spin seat, same split design. A little bit different. Yeah. You know, this has the spinning guides on it, but this is a little 7.2, and this is a medium mm -hmm. in the Revelation series. Um, we can go ahead and get a little bend on this one. Glasses you can see. On. So, how, what is the difference between this one and the one we just looked at? Length. Length? And this one has spinning, and the other one was built as a casting. Okay, yes, but yeah. is there any, because of the length, does it affect any of the fastness or the power, or is it just changing? Yeah, their... this one is not as fast. The okay. shorter rods, the way they're designed, they're they're a little faster. Yeah. This one is a little bit not as fast, but it is it is fast, but it's just not extra fast. Yeah. As you can see, the power, you know, when you go to set the hook, 
It's right there. We want, you know, when you're bass fishing, there's a lot of hook setting going on. This is gonna hit me in the face. I <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> um, so you can see the power. This yeah. is built as a spinning rod. Seven two is a good length for yeah. almost anything. Um, I like the extra couple inches. Yeah. You know, a lot of people fish seven foot, but I like the seven two, even seven six. So you can see this is a seven two. And it's got Go plenty of power. It's yeah. got plenty of power. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw one on the yeah, the load cell? Yeah, let's look at the load cell and okay. see how much power you, because you'll be able to see when I start to bottom out. Yeah. So let's take that 7.2, if I have it Ooh. over here. I'm throwing stuff over here. Got we got a okay. question over here. Yes. Uh, Studs Clifford asked, what's the difference between casting and spinning blanks? Ooh. Spinning blanks have a tendency to be a little lighter, but a blank doesn't really know. It really doesn't care. I know a lot of guys that take the spinning actions because they like the lighter powers and make them into casting rods. Or you could take a casting rod and build it into a spinning rod. So basically we just separate the two just to have more models. <laughs> <laughs> more options. <laughs> more, more options. No, actually they, they have a chance to be a little lighter. Watch your coffee. I think we got a cast in. Oh, oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting out of the way. That was a double overhand cast from Holly. Looks like we're giving something away. Okay, it looks like we're giving something away to Bear Franklin. Bear Franklin? Yes, because I have a sticky note here that tells me now, which is nice. Yeah. Bear and Franklin, if you're out there, let you us know. This one, this wonderful t-shirt, Team Rain Shadow oh, Blue, nice and it's got... got... Oh, wow. It's got Matt Koch. This is a friend of mine from California. Design this. I have the original hanging in my office. Um, doesn't do it justice. His paintings are amazing. The um, fish head art guy. If you ever want to see his art, just go on the internet and see it. Matt Koch. He's an amazing guy. I own a lot of his originals. And this is one that he did for me. Um, I think it's a washed out on the t-shirt a little bit, but it does, he does a nice job. Yeah. But anyways, you got the yellowtail. You've got your albacore. You've got your mahi. You've got your lingcod. And you got your calico. And... Signed by Matt Koch. Woohoo! And he did this in 2016 for us. So. Beautiful. So this is the shirt that you got? Yep. Um, Bear Franklin. I turned yep. over my thing so I That's couldn't okay. see it. Bear yep. Franklin. And if you do like this t-shirt, we have it for sale on build2fish.com. It's build, the number two, fish.com. Nice. Yeah. If you yeah. want to buy a shirt. Woohoo. In case, you want, a, in case yep. you want one like this. I'm sorry you didn't win it this time, but Bear got it. So Bear got it. <laughs> Bear, Bear, if you're watching this, um, Send us a direct message on Facebook and um, we'll get your address and send it to you. Awesome. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you for casting that, Holly. I'm really glad it didn't. didn't <laughs> glad hit it didn't face. smack me upside the head. Would have been funny, though. It kind of would have been funny. <laughs> okay. I'm well, pretty quick, here. though, wasn't I? Out of the way. <laughs> All right, so we're going to show the power of the 72M. We're going to pull on this. We're going to set the load cell. Is it set? Yep. And I want to show people. The power. Okay, you got your tape. All right, and I showed you it's a kind of a, it's, it's not a real fast rod. This is a fast rod, but it's mm -hmm. built as a spinning. It's a 7.2M. And you can see as I pull, right, I'm going to pull on this thing. And bass rods, I mean, this is full on. I mean, I'm ripping lips right here on bass. Ripping right? lips. Ripping lips, and I'm maxing out this rod right about there. You can see the yeah. shake. And fish on. Fish on, right? Okay, what do you got there? Five pounds? 5.9. Six, we'll call it six, just to be nice to you. Round it off to six. There's not, a, I mean, this rod's got a lot of power. Yeah. Right? Um, to break this, you would have to make a mistake. Yeah. You'd have to I get it, it under the boat or yeah. try to boat flip. Don't do that, bass guys, unless you're really good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Bass guys are going to do it. And most of them are good at it, so it's all right. So anyways, that's the 7 2 I like that one. Yeah, so that's our jerk bait, husky bait, uh, you know, pointer minnow rods. And like I said, we'll have Mike Thorson. He's going to show you the baits a little yeah. bit later and match up with these rods. But um, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's see. Where did my, did you take my paper? I probably did. You totally did. Yeah. He's stealing stuff from me. Yeah. I want to talk about the crankbait. You want to talk about okay. yeah, 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 yeah. The judge. The judge. The judge. All right. This is our judge blank. A lot of people know 
Um, my opinion, the finest crankbait ever built. This is made in the United States. This is our wow. design. We've had it around for a long time. Um, go ahead and pull it to number fourth rod on, on the list there. What is this material that I'm seeing? So this is an S-glass material oh. with a carbon weave on the back end. It gives it some strength. Yeah. It's good for cosmetics, but um, this is one of the finest, if not the finest, my opinion, crankbait rods ever built. I like the 710 versions, but we're talking today about the seven foot versions for the lipless crankbaits and the little little rattle traps, yeah. lipless crankbaits and those kind of things. And this one is rated 12 to 20, yeah. 3 eighths to 1 ounce. Great all around rod. So the power, this power compared to the ones that we've been looking at is a little bit more, yeah? It's a little different. This one has more of a uh, moderate action yeah. than some of those fast, because like, we had the extra fast yeah. action, depending on the bait you're throwing. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, a lot of that has to do with that. So. Okay. Well, we're throwing lipless crankbaits and stuff like this with this crankbait rod. Short and fat. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to pull on this one so you can see, but this one is built. Yeah. Pretty, pretty basic. Has the oh, EVA like cork composite. Yeah, it's a flat side because a lot of guys, you know, when you're crankbaiting, the idea was, you know, it's like this and the rod's bent like that and you're just. So it doesn't dig into your arm and your so, side? Yeah. That's actually really smart. I actually yeah. haven't noticed that before. That's really cool. It is cool, but we got rid of it. Oh. It wasn't a big seller, so I don't think we even sell it. No one thought about it. <laughs> yeah, I know, actually. So, anyways. <laughs> well, I it thought it was cool. It is cool. I thought so too when we designed it. That's why we do things like that, right? <laughs> So <laughs> we got good engineers. We, we do. We have the best engineers in the world. Okay, right. let's pull on it. I don't want to get myself in any more trouble. It's all right. You're not in trouble. <laughs> Back it up a little bit. All right. So we're throwing lipless crankbaits. You know things like that. And you can see the bend comes through, through a lot, through a lot of the blank. All right. This is a crankbait model. Yeah. And you know, and it has that. But this particular one has lots of backbone. Lots of backbone on this, right? <laughs> don't, the, don't bass on me now. Right? <laughs> so you can see the power. Um, awesome blank. Crankbaits. Crankbaits. Very popular technique. Yeah. People have been cranking them. Cranking them for a long time. Cranking them for a long time. Cranking for a long time. And it's more the glass rods, you know. But this time of the year, um, lipless crankbaits, you know, red eye shads, rattling wraps. Rattling Raps. They got all these crazy Sounds names. Like jazz man. groups. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, you don't want to see me go into my music. No, we're not going to do that. All right, we're not going to do that. Okay. So. Okay. What do you want to look at next? All right. Next is the jig and pig. The oh, plastics. Oh, oh, we got another oh, cast in. Oh. Okay. Wait. I'm, back I'm gonna move my teeth. All right. Holly's casting in, everybody. If you know Holly, <laughs> back up, everybody. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even try uh, to catch I think catch we that. need to work on Collie's casting technique yeah. here, folks. Yeah, we're going to have to Tips and tricks in the comments below. Last week we did good. It was a nice, easy cast. Maybe you need to lot it or did do something Did we do casting last week? We did, remember? The hat? I think there was a hat. I, don't, I think casting. that was the week before. Was it the week before? Yeah. Okay, my oh, Doc Ski! What? I think I've heard this name before. Oh. <laughs> Doc Ski, because you're so amazing and we love you so much. We might... Oh yeah, there you go, Doc Ski. Doc Ski. I know you're watching, Doc. <laughs> what? I know you're watching. It's <laughs> what? We're sending that size. Too. We're sending this size. No, too. be nice. <laughs> He's a medium. I mean, a large, at least, right? Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll just steal this one. <laughs> show him the back. Okay, I'll show you the back. Show him the back. It's got the tribal. The tribal. The tribal, tribal salmon on there. Tribal salmon. Yeah. Build to fish. Which Doc is Ski. Doc Ski. Doc and Ski's the man. We'll, we'll send you your size, I Most guess, definitely. if you want it. Most definitely. Um. <laughs> Doc Ski's been a big supporter and part of our family for a long time. Um, I've been following his work since I can remember. Mm -hmm. And um, anyways, he's a great guy. He cares about our military like we do, our armed forces. He's an amazing weaver. He's, you know, one of the top in the world, if not the top weaver in the world. He definitely has done a lot for our industry, and I love Doc Ski. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I love Doc Ski. So anyways, let's move on. Okay. So we got the Jig and Pig plastics. Jig and Pig. Jig and Pig. Woohoo! I know, so we're gonna throw some Jig and Pig. And we start moving up into the heavier rods, more the medium heavies and things like that. 
So we're going to start with our Revelation 17 medium heavy, our jig and pig. So I think we have one up there built. I'll put it on here. You can see the little more power. I'll be able to we'll reset the scale here. Ooh, is this the guy you're looking for? Yep, that would be the one. Okay. I like this one. Somebody built this one for me. It has a nice little tiger. Looks like an Eric Noguchi. A tiger? Yeah, this looks like an Eric Noguchi build, if I, if I was going to say. Oh, Gooch. Yeah, and yeah, this one has a little longer rear grip. That's how I, I prefer. Mm -hmm. I can cross this over also to a light inshore. You know, calico bass rod, things like that, but jig and pig rod, right? Um, as you can see, classic build. We start getting into the heavier rods, double footers, double footers. And um, yeah, that's our jig and pig. So jig and pig? Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and put this hand. one on the machine. That one? No, I'm going to oh. put the blank on. <laughs> I, I think I have it over the here. Build on the machine? You going to pop some tip tops off today? i pop some tip tops off. Maybe I don't have it over here, but we'll see. This feels like a I medium think you heavy. Do. Oh, that's a jig. Uh, oh, that one's pretty color. It's a pretty color. It's a pretty color. Yeah, we can talk about this one then. Oh, I like that one too. Yeah. What are we switching over to? It's the same thing, but in a higher modulus. So some people, oh. because of the jig and pig, some of it is a pickup, I'm gonna imagine. Yeah. The fish pick it up and you wanna feel it. So you want yeah. a little bit higher modulus, even though you're gonna feel it on the RX-7. This is the next grade up. This is the <laughs> RX-8. This is the Immortal Series. <clears throat> in the Immortal Series, there's 16 dedicated models in bass. Not counting the popping, not counting the walleye. Yeah, and that's not counting popping and walleye, right? So, <laughs> okay. Anyways, yeah. so just in the dedicated bass in the high modulus um, Immortal Series. And this one is the IMMC-72MH. So we're going to go ahead and put our glasses on and show you the power of this. And they start getting heavier, yeah. I mean, a little bit heavier in the hand, but you want that wall thickness for those heavier blanks because yeah. that's where you get your, your power from. Also, um, if you're asking a lot of questions in the comments and we haven't gotten to them yet, we're going to take some time to read the comments and do a Q&A at the end. Um, so we are paying attention to you. Yes. We hear you. Also, do I look like I have a mullet right now? Because I feel like in my glasses it looks like I have a mullet. No, you look all right. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hey, can you reset that for me? I mean, I guess. Don't mind, Eden. Sometimes she just kind of floats off on her own. It's the ADHD. It's, the it's ADHD. fun to watch. It is fun to watch, though. I've known her my whole life. <laughs> yeah, I've known you my entire life, I too. Know. All right, here we go. We're going to pull on this. Back, put your glasses on. Oh. So you'll be able to see this is a pretty, this is a little faster rod, but this is a fast rod. It's not an extra fast, but it is a fast rod. It's got a lot of sensitivity, and we're going to go ahead and pull on. You can see I got more power on this thing than I did on the last one, right? Oh. And I'm giving it to it. You know, this, is, this is a big fish, right? Yeah. Well, sometimes you got to pull them out of the grass and Doing stuff. Doing it single-handed, right? too. And this is, yeah. <laughs> and it's got plenty of power. Yeah. I didn't max it out, and that was at 7 pounds. 7.1 7. Yeah. pounds, and you can see the power. I mean, I can bend this thing, right? And you can see where it starts to bend right here, mm -hmm. right? So fast action. Starts, pop, starts bottoming out here, and nothing in the back, right? Gorgeous. Yeah. Do we have a build sheet for this? We do have a build sheet for this. Let's take oh, a look yeah. at that. I love Probably to take a look at that. Let's pull up a sheet. Let's pull up the build sheet right here for this particular one. Um, this one has all the high-end stuff. As we move up in our series, you can see when we have RX-6, we use more of a... The, Basics. Basic price point sensitive stuff. As we move up in modulus graphites, we move up in materials. So what we're doing here is this is our high end. This particular one has the the Alps. Oh, the Easy Ream. Aluminum, yes, with the Easy Ream. You're like, hey, you're learning. I, yeah, so I know stuff. Good, good for reaming, right? Mm -hmm. And then putting this on. This your rear grip. And we went with the blue theme because I do like the blue theme. We got the blue whiny checks. I like the carbon. I think it looks pretty. Yeah, and then we got the carbon, and our carbon is amazing. Yeah. You want to get a little... The fit and finish of our carbon is amazing. There's no lips. There's no nothing. This is this is the the real deal. Gorgeous. Yeah. Flat for your whining checks there. Transitions are smooth. This one is an MVT. It has the gray carbon, and we have the blue bird cage to match our blue theme. And that's that 
right there. Fits like a glove. Fits like a glove. And we have our FBWC winding checks. We sell a ton of these because the inner diameter changes, the outer diameter never changes, and it, and it hides the hole up in front here. And so you can pull off that hood and have no foregrip. So basically you don't need a foregrip. And then we have the Alps Titanium Guides. We've got a 10, no, a 12, 10, 8, 7s, and then looks like 6s all the way out with an Alps top to match. And all of our prints are where, Eden? You can find them in multiple locations. Okay. We have these amazing guide spacing prints that our team has put together. Um, if you are looking for them, they are on our guide spacing Facebook group, which is going to be a group of over 3,000 rod builders yep. that kind of talk to each other, get advice, and it's pinned right at the top of that to give them a good, you know, yeah. a good use for our build sheets. And then rodbuilding.org. Rodbuilding.org. There are a lot of different places you can get them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. There's over 500 of them. It's a big deal. And if there's one that you can't find, if you give us a call here at Batson, we'll yeah. look you up. Yeah, we will. Jeff, you got a question? Yeah, uh, difference between E-glass and S-glass. E-glass and S-glass. What's gonna, the difference? I'm going to bring Mike in. Oh, Mike. Mike. Perfect person I, to answer this question. I know the difference, but, you know, when it comes to the real technical stuff, we're going to bring in Mike Thorson now. He's going to talk about some of this other stuff. But I'm gonna have Mike answer that question. Mike, you wanna step on in? Sure. Come on in. Bye. Good to see you, Mike. Likewise. How's your day? Good. <laughs> if any, um, one second, Mike. Let me make sure everybody knows who you are. This is Mike Thorson. Probably the most one of the most knowledgeable guys in our industry. He's been in and around this industry for over 40 years. Um, he's been with Batsons for 18 years. We would not be where we are today without Mike Thorson. A wealth of knowledge and he loves to share his knowledge with people, so that's who he is. If you ever have any questions, Mike at BatsonEnterprises.com. They're more than happy to answer any questions. I know. He's been, yep. he's been helping us out a lot. We get a lot of questions here, and I can't answer everything, so Mike is our in-house professional. He used to be a bass pro. Oh, I did a lot of bass tournaments when I was a little younger. <laughs> Not so much anymore, but I still fish a lot. So, yeah. so go ahead and answer that question. My difference between um, S-Glass and E-Glass. It depends on what S-Glass you're talking about. We work with a couple different types. Uh, a regular S-Glass is a little bit thinner material than a standard E-Glass, so you can roll it into a little bit finer tip and get a little bit different action than you can with standard E-Glass. When I say thickness, that's the ply thickness of the material. If you go all the way to linear S-glass, which we're bringing a couple models out uh, later this year. Hey, don't tell everybody. Uh, that, <laughs> that's even more like the thickness of, say, a standard graphite, <laughs> and I can roll a real fine tip with it. Um, as far as strength and sensitivity and everything, S-glass is generally a little bit higher in modulus than E. If you go to linear S-glass, it's definitely higher in modulus. So that's a basic answer to your question. Um, hopefully that gives you what you're looking for. Excellent. Um, I think Bill wanted me to kind of go over some of these rods and why we have them designed a certain way for these given baits. I'm going to do that now, I think. So. Yeah. I think so. Unless, do we have any more questions out there, Jeff, that we want to answer? We're going to jump right into them. In we'll jump back in. Okay. We're going to jump right back in. We're going to start with the float and fly, Mike. Okay, perfect. Yes. All right, the, the float and fly, it's a nine foot light action two piece rod. You might say, why nine foot? Um, while you're casting a light little bobber, if you look at this right here, this is a typical float that you're using. And then the bait that's presented underneath that is just a little uh, hand tied hair jig like this and usually what you're doing with these is you're trying to match the hatch so to speak early in the year um, the reason for light line we suggest four to six pound test is so the lighter the line the better this is going to move in the water how you impart action with it is this bobbers on the surface and the little subtle wave action is making this thing waver in the water it's, it's like an indicator too yes it is it's a strike indicator <laughs> for lack of a better thing but um, Believe it or not, this was a, a system that was first marketed by Charlie Knuckles down in the Tennessee v TVA lakes like Dale Hollow and those areas where big smallmouth are real common. Mm -hmm. there, there's open water there year round. As the water gets colder, the fish, because they're cold blooded, obviously don't move quite as quick. So it's a very subtle presentation. 
main lake points, secondary points. This is before the fish have started to get on the flats and move up into shallower water. Around here, this would be a real early, early spring presentation like you do right now. Uh, if you were in Washington State, it might be used on Banks Lake or Moses Lake or somewhere like that. Um, obviously, in the upper Midwest, after ice out, it's a popular presentation. The reason for the longer rod, if we try to do that with a short rod, the line tends to dip down and hit the water, and that bobber's going to move then. Just like if you're drift fishing with a bobber, you, you, you like to have the line up off the water so you're not getting that bobber to move too quick. This is a subtle, slow presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really effective and often overlooked. Uh, a very, very effective presentation. On jerk baits, can you grab me those two that I pulled out over there? Of course. I'll try you know, to stab myself. Jerk baits, them. now we're getting into a situation where you're starting to look for spring bass um, in general. And the reason we like the medium extra fast rods, you want to be able to get the bait out there. And I believe, you know, if you go with the smaller six, eight, pointers eight. like this or smaller husky jerks, no, that's six, better eight, on a spinning seven. rod. If you get into the larger ones like this, obviously a casting rod is going to be a little bit better right. uh, for uh, working the bait. But you want the tip of the rod to have some give, but you want it to be stiff enough that when I jerk that rod, I'm impairing the action on the bait that I want. Um, also, by having a subtly lighter tip when that fish hits, it allows them to get that bait a little bit deeper in their mouth. But then you want that blank to shut off quick so you can get a good hook set. Because when they grab this bait, you know, you're pulling trebles and you want to really be able to get the hooks in the fish real well. Yeah. But the smaller baits, spinning rods, the bigger ones, I like to use on a casting rod. Oh, so that's why we have the two. Yeah. That's why we have the 7-2 spinning and then right. we have the 6-8. Oh. The other thing you notice that we've got this one built up with a little bit shorter handle than what you would normally put on this length of rod. That's so when you're jerking it, the handle isn't going to get in your way or catch your coat. You're generally in the spring you're, you're going to have a little bit more clothing on, so to speak, and you don't want the handle getting in your way as you're working the bait all the time. It's a jerking motion back and forth. Hard to mimic it right here exactly, but sure. you generally build it with about a 7 to 8 inch rear grip. Oh. If you look at the action of this, you can see that lighter tip, but then the blank shuts off. Mm -hmm. So really, really applicable. Um, and I, You know, I'm split between spinning and casting personally. Again, when I'm throwing the bigger baits, I switch over to casting. Earlier in the season, when I'm generally throwing smaller ones, I like them on a spinning rod. Because because it's easier to cast, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to adjust. Most your most bait jerk casting. baits today, and there's a plethora of them on the market, have weight transfer systems in them, so they're easy to cast. But obviously, this is not going to work as well on a uh, casting rod. Yeah. It looks yeah. like we have a question. Uh, Doc Ski says, uh, "Would you use the same rod for walking the dog?" Uh, I'd use a little bit stiffer rod for walking the dog. I'd have a similar handle length, um, but most of the, uh, the top water baits, he's talking about his era spook is what he's talking about. I thought hadn't he was talking brought, about the yo-yo Hadn't brought that out many, many years ago. Those are usually half to five eighths ounce. You'd be pushing it on, on the extra fast. You'd probably want to go up to uh, just a straight medium or a medium heavy. Mm -hmm. I like a shorter handle like that though because you're doing this back and forth. Um, but a little bit heavier blank than what you would use there. Perfect. Awesome. So you got um, that duck, so instead of a medium, it go to up to a medium heavy. Mm. For the that would be my choice. To help walk that and dog. And again, it, most of, you know, I mean, Heaven has like four sizes. They got the Zara Puppy, which would be a spinning rod, all the way up through the typical one, which is a half to five eighths. So, right. Um, Perfect. The Beautiful. crankbait. Crankbait, the reason Bill was showing you the action of these rods um, when you hook a fish on a crankbait a lot of the times again bass don't actually bite they flare their gills and suck a bait in you feel it you set the hook you, you've got the fish generally speaking crankbaits though because they're weighted like that when a fish gets near the boat they tend to the first time they see the boat they always make a run all right if you have a stiffer rod that's when that bait will full, pull loose so to speak, yep. um, the uh, the softer action prevents them from ripping that crankbait out of their mouth uh, when they're getting near the boat. It's one of the big advantages to having that that give in the rod tip. Our judge rod, rod what's so nice of that, it combines that 
softer upper section, but you do have that lifting power that you can steer that fish and get it in a little bit quicker or get it away from cover. Rattle baits are popular in the spring. That's when bass are starting to get on flats before they're up real shallow. It's a great search bait. Cast retrieve, cast retrieve, cast retrieve. That's why it's so popular. Mm -hmm. Same thing with spinner baits or chatter baits, same type of application. I have some um, questions about this. Yes. What is this supposed to mimic? Mimic? This isn't completely rigged. Normally you would put a, a shad body on the back of this and it, it, it swims in the water. Okay. So it's going to represent a bait fish. Okay. Um, the chatter bait, uh, it makes a little bit more noise. The rattle baits have mm -hmm. rattles internally so you can hear them. Right. Uh, the lateral line on the bass will pick up the noise. Also, bass are both sound and visual oriented when they're feeding. Um, nice. So let's take a look at this. Um, one here. I think what's next? The jig and pig rods. Yeah, basically. the jig and pig. So um, we're talking more of the medium yeah, heavy stuff. Yeah. What a, a typical bass jig is usually, you know, it depends, but quarter to half ounce. I, I throw a lot of three eighths, and by the time you put a rubber trailer on it, we used to use a lot of pork line. That's gone away. In modern times and everything's been replaced by flavored plastics or power baits or whatever. They actually use the pork rinds. Right. The, so, pork the, but when you look at the rod action, do you have a medium heavy yes, here? Yes, the one on the end. On, on the end yes. What we're looking for is, you know, the reason for the quick tip is nine out of ten times when you're making a, a presentation, it's a pitching motion. And I want that tip to load so when I make that little flick underhand and I'm pitching that jig to cover, um, it will load the rod up and we'll get the advantage of being able to make that cast without a lot of effort. Why do you want it to shut down so quick then? Well, obviously, not obviously, but in a lot of situations you may be fishing to heavy cover. There might be wood, stumps, uh, brush, brush piles. You want to set that hook and then turn that fish and be able to pull it away from that cover. If they get back down in there, then you're looking at breaking line or what, whatever. But mm -hmm. that's the reason for a little bit lighter tip and then the shutdown in the butt end of the rod. Plenty uh, of power in the back Plenty end. of power, but we do make them so they load um, with the given weight range. If you're going to throw lighter jigs, go to the medium action. The typical jig, jig rod in my mind is a medium heavy. Uh, if you're fishing heavier jigs, which you can do, um, you know, you can be <laughs> punching or whatever, you can go to an extra heavy or heavy. Yes. So we've got them in all different weight ranges, but mm -hmm. the typical one that most guys are going to carry is going to be around a seven to seven and a half foot medium heavy rod. Yep. Uh, Perfect. The, the thing when you're fishing them, by the way, make sure you're not just looking for the bite, but look at where your line enters the water. A lot of times you'll just see a little jump. You're not going to feel it necessarily. It may feel a little mushy, so right. watch where your line enters the water when you're fishing that jig and pig. Perfect. Wow. Thank Thanks, you so Mike. much, That's Mike. A... That was amazing. We got a question. Oh, hold yeah. on. We're going to cast in. Mike, get ready. Watch out. Uh -oh. Okay, we've got lots uh -oh. of things going on right now. Oh! <laughs> I thought you had that one, right? Mike, I thought you were going to go football style. I thought you had one here. Start reeling in. We got a little cast in. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you got that <laughs> right in here. There we go. Okay. Caleb. Oh, I ripped it. Caleb Roberts. Caleb Roberts. Big winner. Let's see what you won. Oh, it's one of my favorites, I think. Is it one? Of, how did you already know? Because. Huh? How did you know that? I'm the one who designed this shirt. Okay, so I call this the Cthulhu shirt. The what? <laughs> but... But what do you call it? It's the taco shirt. Taco shirt. Octopus. So it's got the octopus legs on the front mm -hmm. and on the back. Turn it around. And on the back. Yeah, we got the octopus legs on the front and back. It's my taco shirt, you know, because everything eats taco in the salt water. It's like a delicacy, right? Mm -hmm. So octopus. So anyways. Beautiful. Okay, Caleb, send us a message. We'll get your size and we'll ship it out to you. I know that name, Caleb Roberts. You know everyone. Well, not everyone. <laughs> Okay, right. beautiful. Let's you got get a question? question. Yeah, I got I got two in a row actually. Sure. First one from Steven wants to know what would be good for flipping a skipping docks. Huh? Uh, the seven two um, skipping docks. It depends on the bait you're using. If it's a jig, most guys will use a standard medium heavy rod. They might go to a little bit shorter rod because you're in a little bit closer quarters. The six eight would be a good choice. I skip a lot of product. We make a six two uh, rev spinning rod that I actually designed for skipping like tubes, uh, skirted grubs, that type of thing when you're fishing docks. I really like a spinning rod application shorter because you're getting close and you want to skip it under up underneath there. But we don't have that particular one out here. But no. There's a build sheet and it'd be the REVF 62 
M? M? I think, yeah. It's an M. Yeah. 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 Six, yeah. Two. six two. Yep. That's a good that's a good length for skipping. Beautiful. Yep. Uh, Next. The second one was from William. Wanted to know about um, frog frog blanks, uh, open water and uh, vegetation slot. Sure. William. Um, yep. Again, a, a medium heavy will work if you're getting in, throwing frogs in the pads or emergent vegetation or milfoil or whatever. A lot of times guys will step up to a heavy because you're really, the uh, idea being they still have a tip that will load with the typical weight plastic frog or soft bodied frog. Um, but you really got to get that fish's head up in, on top of that vegetation and then crank them out of there. You can't do it with a lighter action rod. No. So, and then the, like longer, the, the longer length, um, you'll notice the ones that we specify, again, you're keeping the eyelet up above the cover. If you have a shorter rod, you can just look at the angle. It's harder to work that bait properly. Longer one, it keeps the eyelet up and it isn't getting hung up as much. So I like to go with, you know, 7.3 to 7.6 for that. We myself. even have a 7.11. Yeah, for yeah. great big ones. Yeah, We're going to get that. slushies at 7.11? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions there? Um, I think we're going to do another Q&A at the end here. Sure, maybe real quick, uh, Lori Heath is wondering when the new clothes are going to be, the new shirts are going to be. Lori Heath, the new shirts, Dad was wearing one of them the other week. Uh, we've been working on a lot of new clothing, but that specific shirt will probably be out end of March, two weeks. Two more weeks, we'll have the new Team Rain Shadow Northwest's saltwater shirt. I'm yes. wearing it. It has the tuna, salmon, halibut, lingcod, crab. All, all the good there, stuff. All on yeah. that dark shirt with the nice Team Rain Shadow logo across the front. Yeah. So, yeah. We've got some bass ones in the works, too. Yeah, we've got some oh, bass ones in the works. we got work. some bass ones. We'll let you go back to right. work. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mike. so much, Mike. I'll go make it some money. Yeah, go make yeah. it some money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Wonderful. Um, since we're talking about the t-shirts, yeah. if you liked anything you saw here today, it is on buildtofish.com. Yep. Um, if you liked any of these blanks, uh, we have a website, batsandenterprises.com, where we ha have some of our dealers there. Yep. There's a little button you click, you say dealers, yep. and then it tells you where to buy our products. Yes, most um, definitely. So that's pretty amazing. Uh -huh. I think that... Uh, Question. Earlier, Art from Art's Custom Rods was yes. asking about our all-around, all-purpose, one rod for bass, which would you choose? And I said, well... It's the I am... It's away. the 843. It's a seven-foot... 8 to 17 pound test. We're giving one away today, Art. Um, this one is standard graphite, durable, sensitive enough for anything you're going to do. If you're going to have one rod, it's the MB843. Yep, and we're giving it away. We're giving this one we're away. We're going to give it away right now. And if a rod builder wins it and wants to build his own, we will go ahead and let him pick any bike he wants. Yeah. That's fair. I feel like that's fair. Because you know, you stole this one from my office. Oh, we're giving it away. <laughs> you won't even notice it's gone. <laughs> I have more than one, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I took this from you, but I need you to hold it. Okay. So I'm going to go on my handy dandy cellular device. Are we going to give it away now? Oh, we're going to give it away now. So this week we decided to pick from the people who said going on our Facebook Live event for oh, Blank Talk. Sweet. This week's. This week's. All right. So we're picking it right now. Nice. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -da -da. And how are you going to pick? Don't, you know what? Don't do this. You don't like when I do that? Yeah, if we're gonna do it, we should have a real drum or something. Then I can bang on it or something. But you, yeah. You don't like my fake drum? Okay, yeah. you're distracting me. I know. <laughs> okay. So it looks like the winner yes. is for the MB843 is Chris Matson. Chris Matson? Chris Matson. Sounds like Batson. Almost. Kind of sounds is like Batson. Is it M A T S O N? M A T T S O N. All right, Chris. Hopefully you're watching. Um, contact us. We'll send you this particular build, mm -hmm. this rod right here that my daughter took out of my office. <laughs> or we can send you a blank of your choice, whatever one you want. Take the rod. Take the rod. Don't take the rod. Well, don't tell him that. <laughs> I just don't joking. feel guilty, Chris. <laughs> don't um, I also want to say, in case um, you guys haven't been watching for very long, we are doing this in a working warehouse because we want to be able to have the wealth of our entire um, warehouse here yep. where we can grab everything. Yep. Um, so if you do hear tape noises or our warehouse guys in the back, they're working. They are working hard and doing great stuff and shipping out all your orders. So that's what that is, just in case. You want to give a wave? Yeah, everybody give a wave. Boys are working hard. They're always working hard. We stay extremely busy out here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an honor and a blessing 
to to be in this position to do what we do. Yeah. You know, I'm so happy that the response has been so good and people enjoy what we're doing and ask us the questions and um, we could do this for for a long time. You know, we have over 500 models and we probably barely touched 30 different models in the, the last six weeks. The first of five bass episodes. <laughs> yeah, it's actually right. <laughs> you know, so um, we do this to for you folks out there, for the rod builders and the rod building community. And the anglers. Yep. And our passion, our true passion mm -hmm. is this industry, the Batson family. This is what we do. We're not, I'm not trying to here to sell you anything. I want you to feel comfortable partnering with the Batson family and hopefully you're out there fishing because that's what it comes down to, that yeah. time on the water and being with your family and friends and all of that kind of stuff. So We love that here. Yes, Art we do. Arturo says, tell the warehouse thank you. All that they do. Yeah. Arturo says thank you for everything that you do, guys. Can I get a round of applause? Yeah. Thanks. It's pretty cool. We have 700 wholesale accounts, active wholesale accounts worldwide, yeah. and we ship a lot of stuff out of here every day. And talk to these guys too. Yeah. And um, Italo I'm, says hi. Italo. Hi, Italo. <laughs> Italo. 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 Is he there with all his boys? No. Uh, yeah. All right. Hi, Tolo. All right, we love so, you, Uncle Tolo. Um, we're going to get back to work. I think it's Friday, so... Oh, you want to do a little bit of a Q&A? Do we have any questions to answer? No. Not so much. We did quite a few. Okay, Good. we did Good. a lot of questions. Well, yeah, I'm glad that... Yeah. We'll get oh, yeah. I think we're I think we're forgetting something. Why are we forgetting? I don't think we're forgetting anything. The yet. lightning? Oh, the lightning rod. The lightning oh, rod. Oh, yeah. That's the story of the day. All right, so... Okay. I, I, Tell the story first. Okay, first of all... Um, I like to show different things that happen in this industry. A lot of cool different things happen. So uh, we get this phone call one day and this guy's like, hey, I want the warranty department. I'm like, yeah, what, what's going on? He goes, well, I was out on the lake and a lightning storm came and my rod got struck by lightning. I was wondering if we can warranty it. I'm like, well, you know, that's kind of a, that's kind of a stretch for a warranty. But just because if you have the rod and send it to me, I will send you another one. <clears throat> so he goes, no problem, I'll send you the rod. So, if you ever wonder what it looks like when lightning strikes a rod, this is what happens, folks. So I'm gonna come around on that side. Wait, is that the, the hairs? Is that the blank? That's the blank, yeah. So, um, it was sitting up and lightning struck it and it took all the resin out of the blank. So basically, that's just the carbon, right, of the tip of this rod. So this is what we call the lightning rod. <laughs> um, anyways, something kind of cool, something kind of different, something kind of funny. But we get a lot of crazy warranties here. And this is one of the craziest warranties I've ever seen. But we call it the lightning rod. And there's no resin. It's just straight um, cloth. That's so funny. Right, Yeah. <laughs> so anyways... There is my little my little fun story for the day, and this this actually is in the Batson collection yes. on one of the racks, just because it's such a cool story. <laughs> uh, so be careful out there when you're on the lake, and and if it if it ever happens to you, I will warranty your rod if you send it to me. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's a guarantee. If it's a Batson blank, and it gets struck by lightning and it looks like that, I will give you another one. <laughs> There we go. Anyways, okay. we just want to thank everybody. Yeah. We feel very blessed. Um, if you ever have any questions, feel free to email us. I've got 21 of the best staff in the industry here to service the industry. And we love you. And thanks a lot. And aloha. And fish on. Fish on. <laughs> I'm going to do my little spiel here now. Oh, we okay. have our YouTube, um, Batson Enterprises. We have our Instagram, Team Rain Shadow. And then we have... Bats and Enterprises on Facebook, which you are on right now. If you liked what you watched today, which I think you would, <laughs> you can like our page and turn on the notifications to get notified every single time we go live. Yes. We are here at Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every yep. week. Yep. Or at least we try to. Yep. <laughs> um, and then the winners for today, I'm just going to say the names again. Send us a message on Facebook. We have Doc Ski, I know you're watching, Bear Franklin, Caleb Roberts and Chris Matson. Send us a message. We will hook you up with what you won today. See you next. Oh. Yeah, next week we're going to do travel rods, everybody. Oh. A lot of people don't know as I start to get ready to travel. I start traveling pretty soon to trade shows and seeing my clients and sitting down with people at tackle stores and doing all kind of stuff. 
Next Friday is my birthday, and I'll be talking about travel rods. I Thank you very it. much. There you go. <laughs> You're old. <laughs>